my friends in Sasquatch land. Tuesday night once again, and Discover Sasquatch is back in the studio, and we will not disappoint once again. We have a very special guest backstage. Um, I'm sure you've all heard of her, Miss Brenda Harris. I'm very excited to have her on the show. Um, many, many years of uh, investigation and research, so I'm um, I'm very excited to talk to her, and I'm sure you guys are all very excited to hear from her. Let's just say hello to everybody in the chat tonight. Hello, Miss Trish C. Uh, Ranger Ron is in the house. The Godfather himself is with us again. Alfred Santariga. Miss Diane Fowler, how are you tonight? Glad to see you all. Be kind is in the house, and that's great. Always remember, be kind all. So without further ado, I know we're running a little bit behind, but... Uh, she has blessed us. She just got out of work and ran home for us, and uh, we appreciate that. And uh, we're looking very forward to this. So, without further ado, let's bring out Miss Brenda Harris. Hello, hello, my new friend. Hello, how are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. And again, thank you so much for being here really appreciated um i know you had to run around to get here and uh we are glad you made it thank you thank you for having me on okay everybody's excited in the chat it's rolling everybody's talking and they're all excited to get this thing running um let's start off the show you give everybody a little bit of your background and how you started in this uh crazy craziness and uh <laughs> and then we'll go from there well, I've um, been doing research uh, for a long time, <laughs> um, over, um, it's going to be, what, 30 years now? So um, I started at a, a really young age, but, you know, didn't say anything, um, kept quiet about it, <clears throat> um, especially uh, uh, to my parents, my own family. Um, I, I, you know, just didn't want to say anything, and you know, I didn't want to get in trouble or you know, at that time I was living at home, and uh, so it goes back to way when I was young when I started getting interested in this uh, Bigfoot stuff, and um, so it started as a young age, and then we've, uh, um, now that I'm married, uh, I live out here in on the reservation, oh, I live about maybe 10 miles west of Farmington, New Mexico. I don't know if you guys know where that is. I live in the uh, Four Corners area. Um, we've had a lot of uh, Bigfoot activity and other strange things, you know, in this area. So back, you know, I would say maybe 2010 or 11, it's been a while, um, I started uh, my own little team. But beforehand, uh, like I said, I've, I've been doing some investigations way back then, but I went ahead and started a, a small team getting uh, together, and we go investigate, which was back in, two, like I said, it was either 2010 or 11. Um, so we would go out and do some research and stuff, investigate, because there was so much uh, going on in this area around that time. So... That's where uh, our team, the team that we put together, that's where it started. And um, since then, um, we've been uh, going here and there. Um, I mainly do a lot of research on the reservations, different uh, in, in the Four Corners area, within the Four Corners area. Um, uh, er, um, uh, those are the areas that um, I do a lot of uh, investigations um, I've been wanting to go out to like different uh, states, but since the COVID hit and then the price of gas just skyrocketed, I had to put that on the back burner for now. Yeah. But in the meantime, I, I'm still here uh, on the reservation uh, here in the, the whole corners area is where I kind of concentrate on right now. Well, um, now you, that keeps you busy year round. And just before we go a little further, I think you, you might have a little problem with your your wire there it's you're getting a little like a breakup is everybody hearing that let's see try now hello one two three yeah i know it's like breaking up on us okay hold on just a minute let me turn okay. this fan off maybe it's the fan no no it's it's definitely the, the, your headset I my think it's like, it's help, like one two three one two three yeah. still yeah. doing it yeah hmm 
And they didn't have enough problems the other night. <laughs> I know. I'm That's sorry. Strange. It must be me. Yeah, I can hear you clear. I don't hear no static or anything. Yeah, you're like you're like a robot. It's like breaking. I was like. Duck, 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 duck. Oh wow. Mm, I don't know. Hold on, I'm gonna. Well, that's that's it. Whatever you just touch is doing it. It's my wire. Oh. Uh, what about now? Yep, still doing it. Okay, so it's got to be this. One, two, three. One, two, three. Still. Yeah. Yeah. I just want everybody to be able to hear you. I'm not that fussy, believe me. Uh, I could try my ear pods and see if that'll work. One, two, three. Still. Yeah, still all crackling, yep. Oh, man. Let me unplug this and see. Can you hear me this way? Can hear you, but you're still crackling. Okay. One, two, three. Still? It's a little, yeah, it's a little better. We can try it for a little while and see what happens. <laughs> yeah, now it's now it's back again it's to back what again. it was. Uh, let me see here. Let me try my ear pods and see if that'll work. I don't know if I okay. can do that or not. Uh, give me a few minutes here. Let yeah, me go take on. your time. I'm sorry. I just okay. want people to hear you. That's all. Okay. Sorry about all right. that. It's okay. Okay, I'll be right back. So, how's everybody doing out there in Sasquatch land? Um, I have, uh, for everybody who's, who's uh, wondering, I have all my eye surgeries have been scheduled. Um, getting that taken care of in September. Uh, we have uh, some new videos coming out soon with a lot of evidence. Um, we're still trying all our uh, experiments out there that we had from the last week's show with Ron Moorhead that we're trying out. So make sure you go back track and take a look at that show. It was a very interesting show. Great guy. Um, everybody's still burning up in the, in the United States. It's hot out there. It was like 100 degrees here today with 100% humidity. So it was very sticky. So I hope she can get this, uh, I hope it works. She's on her way back now. Now you froze up. You might, if you can hear me, Brenda, remove yourself and come back in. That usually helps when you're frozen. Hello. Here, let me turn you up. Can you go one, two, three? One, two, three. You can hear you, but you might want to turn your volume up just a hair. One, two, three. No, nope, still. Still making that sound? No, it's not making the sound. You just you're very low, the volume. No, it's getting better. Yeah, a couple more clicks. I think you're in. Okay, I got you all the way up. All right. How's that, everybody? Can you hear Brenda? Let me know in the chat. 
I have no I have no mic volume. What's going on here? Can you guys hear me now? No. Check one, check one. Can you hear me now? All right, you can hear me, but you can't hear Brenda. They can't hear you. You're just very, very faint without the microphone. Yeah. Um, I don't know what to do. Do you have a microphone at all? Uh, no, not on the headset. No. Yeah. Yeah, she has her earbuds on along for the ride buttons too. You can't hear the volume. Huh. Might as well just go with the original headsets and we'll just go with it. How's that? Okay. We're just going to go with what she had on first, guys. Uh, I know it's a little busted up, but just be patient and we, we'll do fine. One, two, three. You're good. Don't move. <laughs> All right. So uh, let's, let's continue. So you've been on the reservation for how many years investigating the Sasquatch? It's been over 30 years. I've been well, here on the reservation for 30, 33 years, I believe. And what, 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 what got you, what, what was when you were, when you were a teenager or when you ever started uh, 20s or whatever, um, what got you, what was, what was the thing that grabbed you, that, that, that well, grabbed you as, and pulled you in? As a young, uh, as a young kid, um, my mom and my dad, we used to go out to um, see my grandma out in uh, Arizona. And we would leave, uh, leave early in the morning, about 4 o'clock in the morning, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. It's about like a three, three-hour drive. And so um, um, at that time, uh, we would take a pickup truck. So my dad had made like a makeshift bed in the back of the bed of the truck. So... You know, us kids could go, you know, go to sleep on the way. So we, anyway, we were on our way, and um, mom and dad would be listening to the Navajo Hour. And this lady, she would be like be bringing the news and stuff, and um, she would uh, say like, "Oh, don't go at the river late at night. There's a, there's a monster, you know, at the river." And so I. When I heard that, I'm like, well, what's that lady talking about? She said, there's a monster at the river. So my mom and dad would say, oh, it's nothing. Just go to sleep. We'll wake you up when we go to, when we get to grandma. So I'm like, okay. But, they, you know, at that time, they didn't know I was listening, too. So it was like maybe, there, it was during the summertime. So it's like every, maybe every other week, we'd be going to grandma's uh, the past few times um, that, we had gone each time, you know, they would be listening to this, uh, the news. Uh, they call it uh, um, uh, the Navajo Hour. And so she would, um, each time she would say something different about this thing that was down at the river. The second time was like, there's a Yaito at the river. Don't, don't be going down there. You stay away from there. So I'm like, again, you know, I would ask mom and dad, what is, what is a Yaito? What is she talking about? might so you know big monsters what it means big hairy creature and each time i would ask you know they would say uh no, it's nothing just go to sleep and we'll wake you up so i'm like okay so they, they wouldn't say anything but i remember there was one time when we were on our way now i'm not too sure where um this happened i remember we were going down the road and maybe it might have been in kirtland area it's what i'm the old kirtland road uh, that's where i'm kind of thinking this is where it happened was there was something that ran in front of the truck 
And um, my mom's like, yee, what was that? You know, and, it's, and, and the, when you say yee in that Navajo, you know, a lot of uh, Navajos, they, they use the word yee, you know. I guess you could say yikes, you know. What was that? Did you see that? It ran across the road on two lanes. I'm like, what was it? What was it? You know, and but they didn't want us kids to know what it was. So they just brushed it off. So again, uh, probably a month later goes by and get on down to grandma's again in Pinon, Arizona. And then again, this lady was talking on the radio, bring the news. And this time she would use this name. There's a Sasquatch at the river, the San Juan River. Stay away from there. Don't, you know, don't be going down there. You stay away from there late at night. You hear this thing yelling, you know, stay away. I'm like, what is a Sasquatch? Again, you know, dad would always say, it's nothing, just go to sleep. So that name, Sasquatch, it really stuck to me for a long time. I always wanted to know what it was. So as I got older, and then when the movie, in my teens, when that movie came out, uh, The Legendary Boggy Creek came out. You know, at the beginning, I don't know if you've seen that movie, but mm -hmm. at the beginning, you know how the, the guy starts, you know, the, how they're talking and stuff. And then they um, say name. The guy says, there's a Sasquatch. So when the guy said Sasquatch, and I'm like, hey, I remember that name. That, that lady on the Navajo Hour said, there's a Sasquatch at the river. So I'm sitting there in the theaters watching this movie. And this guy's like, there's a Sasquatch, you know. And I'm like, what is a Sasquatch? So as the movie goes on, then they show this big old tall creature. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's running down at the river? I'm like, wow. I said, I, I couldn't believe that was here at the river. I'm like, I thought those just stayed out in the mountains. Well, you know, where they, that's where they live. You know, I didn't know that they lived down at the river or roaming down at the river at that time. So back then, that's when I started, you know, looking into it more, uh, checking into it. And that was back in the um, 70s is when I started really um, checking more into it. But I never said anything to my my brothers or sisters or mom and dad, and I just kept it to myself. When did you go from a believer to a knower? Uh, when I actually, um, we had something uh, that happened as a young child that came around our, our mobile home at the time. When we were living in a mobile home, we had all the windows were open. Um, we kept them open late because it was so hot. And um, I don't know what it was. Might it might have been, even been a skinwalker. I, I really don't know. But um, I just remember us sisters, we had uh, shared at one bedroom. So there was like five of us. And um, <clears throat> something... Um, scratched uh, right underneath the uh the window bedroom window a long scratch all the way underneath the window kind of like around the mobile home you could hear this long scratch we all got scared and at the same time you could smell something it, it smelled really bad and we didn't know what it was so we jumped up and um um ran to my parents' room and we was like hey you know dad there's there's something out there you know something's at the window we could hear it breathing and, and it's, it's scratching the the, the trailer, you know, and so uh, he's just like, oh, it's nothing, just, you know, go to see until the next day we we got up to go look to see, there, sure enough, there were scratches uh, under the window, and so I'm like, what, you know, what is that, you know, we lived probably about, oh, maybe a mile, maybe a mile and a half from the Animus River at that time, and um I always wanted to know, maybe that's what this thing was, you know, uh, roaming around in our area there. But uh, that's what happened then. I'm like, you know, after watching some, some um, like, documentaries or some, like, uh, uh, hearing different people talk about, you know, Bigfoot, this is what it did. And that was one of the things it did. I'm like, okay, maybe that's what this thing is. So... Um, I, uh, as time went on, I uh, remember uh, I had one of my, uh, my, my youngest brother at that time. He uh, came and spent the night with us at home. I, I had two, two, two kids 
at that time, very young, you know, probably, I think maybe five, four and five years old, I believe. They had their cousin sleep over. And my husband at that time used to work at the, the mine. So he's working the graveyard shift. So I um, remember him leaving at 1030 at night. Once he left, um, kids were laughing. This is during the summertime. You know, all the windows were open, had all the windows open. We had a couple of dogs outside. And probably about 30 minutes after he had left, that's when I heard the dogs really whimpering and crying. I'm like, man, what's, why are they crying? What, what, what's going on? You know, so I told all the kids, you know, hey, be quiet. There's just something. I could hear like heavy steps on the, on the walking on the gravel onto the porch. And I'm like, tell the kids, hey, be quiet. There, there's something on the porch. Pretty soon I see the doorknob or, or I hear the, the screen door opening. And I thought, well, maybe it's just the, the, the kids is, um, we had the, the, our, uh, the kids' uh, cousins that spent the night that lived next door to us. They spent the night with us that night. And um, I thought, oh, maybe it's just their, you know, their parents or their dad maybe coming over to kind of spook us, you know, scare us or something. And so I just, you know, just watching and listening. But what caught my attention was the dogs were really whimpering. Uh, crying un under the porch, they they wouldn't budge to come from you know coming out. So I'm like, okay, this is something else. So um, at that time, I told my brother, open the door. Let's let's see. We we both got scared. We all got scared because we didn't know what was at the door. So he slung the door open, and I just remember seeing this tall, skinny, kind of lanky creature standing in front of me. So that's how close I seen one, just like. You know, you greet someone at the door. That's how close it was. Wow. Now, what I what I uh, looked at was well, what I had seen was it was covered in black hair from head all the way down to its legs to its you know feet. Uh, the color of the hair uh, looked black. I didn't get to see the um, the facial features of this creature because it was covered in hair. So it's like we looked at it, you know, we just like stood there and we're looking at it and it just darted off the porch. So from then, back then to now, that's when I, I like, wow, these things are real. People around here <clears throat> in our community have seen it, have heard it. Um, but during that time, nobody wouldn't say anything, it, you know, it kept quiet or kept more quiet. Um, you know, among the uh, uh, the natives, uh, you don't talk about this stuff. You just leave it alone and, and let it go where it needs to go. Don't bother it, and it won't bother you. Yeah. Well, since then, um, I had gotten a lot of reports of this thing attacking, you know, livestock, um, hitting doors, uh, slapping the windows, hitting the side of the house, um, throwing rocks at you and stuff like that. And so um, that's when, uh, during that time is when I started really <clears throat> going out a little more. But like I said, nobody knew that I was doing this um, investigation and stuff like that. I just kept it real quiet. And the reason why I kept it quiet is um, my, my I've, I've grown up in a uh, Christian home. So mom and dad, mom, dad was a, a preacher. And I know for sure I, I probably, he probably would have gone after me for getting into stuff like this, you know. And so, but it's not, it's not that I was doing this to, for popularity or anything like that. That That's not my intentions at all. Right now, I mean, for me, I'm just, uh, I just want everybody to be safe. Um, my whole goal is to try to um, put info out there for people that are um, experiencing some bad things with these things. Uh, try to do, you know, do some things that might help to keep it away. Um, I just want people to be really careful out there. That's the reason why I'm doing this. Uh, I don't want to hear anybody get hurt, you know, because these things can hurt you. So you got to be really careful. Um, I had gotten a call from um, one of the uh, chapter employees hey I, um, I need you to come to the chapter house um, I have two grandmas here that uh, they're in tears because something happened at home and they really want to talk to you 
So I, I you know, I, I met with them, and um, they took me back to their home and showed me what had happened. And they had um, <clears throat> showed me that some sheep had gotten killed. You know, one of the first thing that one of the grandmas, uh, when she was talking to me, she was crying and all because she had lost some sheep. Uh, and this thing killed it. And uh, I said, um, can you, and the first thing she said to me was, can you kill it? Can you get rid of it? Now I'm like, you know, uh, <laughs> I don't know if I can do that. You know, I don't want to get in trouble. You know, so uh, I said, well, let, let me look and see what, what's going on here. So when they took me and showed me what had happened to their sheep, um, what had happened was... Um, uh, the sheep that was killed, it had a, like a, a, a pierced neck, like a hole. And um, it sucked out all its blood. And there was like a, a, sur a surgical slit on the side where um, the insides was just hanging out. None of that was touched, but all it wanted was blood. So I told the grandma, I said, no, this is not a Bigfoot. Bigfoot don't do this. I said, I've seen where animals have been shredded by Bigfoot. I said, this is something else. And so she's like, okay, you know, so we, uh, I, you know, I kept tabs with her and all, but she really thought that it was a Bigfoot. So, you know, we don't only have just a Bigfoot running around here. Do we have some other things going on here at that time um, that uh, killed a lot of sheep in our area? And um, I told, you know, I had talked to a lot of people. I said, you know, what, what I'm seeing right here, this is not a Bigfoot kill. This is totally something different. And whatever it is, is probably flying in or, you know, killing these sheep. And so um, I checked there. And then I had another family, like, you know, this thing's coming in and um, uh, messing with our livestock again. But this was a Bigfoot. Uh, there's a young man that had said um, he was working in his home on the computer late at night, and he just happened to look at outside. And he could hear his um, animals, like the sheep and uh, like the, the really uneasy chickens and ducks and you know rabbits are kind of going, going crazy, like hey, you know something. So he know he could hear something's going on outside. So he looked out the window, and he noticed something big. Um, like going up and down, you know, like doing this, trying to duck and go up. So in front of, in between him and this thing that was ducking, there was like a rabbit cage that was sitting on the stand. So right behind that rabbit cage, this thing would duck. Each time he'd look out and then this thing would pop back up. And so he flashed a light and he got it just in time and this thing had red eyes. And so... um he shot uh, several rounds um, toward that area, and he wasn't—he didn't know if he hit something or, you know. But it took off, you know. And the next day, they had called me and told me what, you know, what was going on. So we um, checked around. Sure enough, we found footprints and stuff like that. And later on that night, that you know, that Bigfoot uh, it did go back to the house and it did um, try to run off with the uh, one of the rabbits. Uh, so what it did to the rabbit is um, when they they had the, the cages, they had, you know, those, uh, what do you call those, bungee ties. Mm -hmm. So they had that on that uh, that stand, so it was wrapped around. So it was really hard, you know, if I or you would try to go and pull that cage off, you can't just pull it right off because of that bungee tie. You know how you know, those things are pretty thick, mm -hmm. thick rubber. So this thing just literally ripped that cage off and, broke that bungee in half what it did was it took it tried to take that rabbit out of the um, the cage and the the uh, thing grabbed its foot okay so you know you've seen a rabbit cage some you know um, <clears throat> it's not very big you know how you have like little squares right so mm -hmm. it did grab the feet and it tried to pull the whole rabbit out that way but it didn't you, oh, it, when it when it pulled the leg it literally pulled off the skin and what was left there was the whole body was still there but the um the skin uh, was ripped off the leg you could just see the bones of the the foot there the rabbit was he was dead 
uh, there was two rabbits in there, but he did it did uh, run its uh, punch a, a um, hole on top of the cage and took one of the rabbits. And so what it did also was it took now this is something that uh, a Bigfoot does on a kill or something like that, you know, it'll take, and this is what it did was when it went back, it took a branch, big old tree branch, and it swiped away its footprint because it didn't want anybody to know like where, you know, where, which way did it go? So it took a big stick and it was just like cleaning the ground, you know, and, um, where we found the cage was out in the field. Uh, the, the one of, like I said, the one of the rabbits was gone and, and this one was dead in the cage. And so um, it did come back and um, bothered um, more of their animals. Now, during this time, it was in the summertime uh, that it would come around. And what we figured is that during the harvest time, this thing comes around and it likes, uh, in the area where we live, there's a lot of farming. So a lot of people grow gardens. So harvest time is when we get a lot of activity out here because it likes the corn, likes the melons, onions, uh, stuff like that. So it'll come and raid those. So now, during the summer from like uh, springtime to uh, before harvest, it, these things are hungry. So they're hungry. They're going to start coming in. That's what happened. Uh, they came in and started uh, raiding the people's animals and killing them because they're hungry. Mm. And so... Um, Harvest time is when it, you know, we get a lot of activity. Also, you know, like I said, during the summertime because they're hungry, so they'll come in. Uh, they used to, years ago, they would um, hang around, but I noticed probably in the month of maybe November, December, they would disappear. They would go on. So I, we kind of figured they would be going back up into the mountains because, you know, that's where they usually come <laughs> from. But now they've learned to, they've adapted to this area. Uh, they've learned to um, survive in our area. So they hang around along the, the rivers down here, uh, or up here, I should say. <clears throat> There's caves that they'll stay in. A um, lot of thick brushes along the rivers where they'll hide. So... Um, yeah, stuff like that that um, I had, uh, I have uh, investigated, and that's where you know it, it just took off back in two thousand nine. Now two thousand nine is the very first um, actual footprint that uh, we found on our property, which happened to be my my youngest son and my nephew. They were playing around late at night outside, and at that time we had uh, were building his home. And uh, they wanted to go jump on a trampoline, just as the music. And so well, at that time, we were staying in a small RV trailer, like I said, while we are building. Well, they come running in about, mm, about 1 o'clock in the morning. When I looked at the time, it said 1. And I'm like, what are you guys doing up? Go to sleep. No, I'm not. you got to come out. Come out right now. We, we found a footprint. We need to you know, bring the camera, you know. So we went out there and... Um, me and my daughter told her to, you know, hey, get up and um, bring the camera so we can uh, get a picture of it. And there was a big old footprint right next to the um, trampoline. And it measured a uh, little over 18 inches long and about four inches wide. That was pretty big. And um, I was like, oh, wow, you know, mm -hmm. I can't believe it's actually on our property, you know, we could hear the dogs. I mean, they would go nuts late at night. They'd be just barking like crazy. And uh, some of uh, uh, one of the ladies that lives behind us, closer to the river, she'd be coming back from work or going home. She'd be getting off the swing shift, which would be about 10.30. So by this time, she'd be driving through our, our behind our home back to her place about 11 maybe 11, 15, 11, 30, something like that. And she would, um, one time she had asked my husband, do you, do you guys ever hear anything late at night? I'm like, we hear the dogs barking, you know? She goes, I, I, I've been seeing this big, tall creature walking around in the, in your, on your property really late at night. 
She goes, I saw it and it saw me and I just slammed on the brakes. It, you know, it really scared me. And I, you know, I didn't know what to do, you know, like, do I wake them up or what, you know? She goes, I just stepped on, I guess, now I hightail home. She goes, I've seen it several times on your property. So it's coming up from um, the river and we live about maybe a quarter of a mile from the river. <clears throat> Uh, it's on the north side of us, uh, so in the, in the backyard to the north. And so um, it's been coming up from there quite a bit. Um, so from 2009 to like now is uh, when I, is is um, I when I do a lot of you know during that time I was doing a lot of investigation stuff and stuff. Right now, I still do. Uh, I haven't really posted anything because of my my husband had some health issues that come up within the past uh, two, three years. So I kind of had to slow down for a bit. So uh, people ask me, how come you haven't posted anything new? It's because I've been taking care of my husband. Mm -hmm. So um, now I have um, some videos that I'll be posting that um, uh show you know show different things that i've been doing uh and things that i've we found out uh out in the field so those will be posted here pretty soon so just hang on yeah. all right <laughs> you know, well, i'll get all of that you know uh, together well you but definitely yeah. you gotta do what you gotta do you gotta take care take care of family first yeah it, it's 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 been a rough the past three years it really has so mm -hmm. you know things you um you gotta put things on the on hold for a while and take care family should you know take always be a priority right, take right. care of your family so, so in 2009 before you started taking off what was your impression of the bigfoot the sasquatch what, what, what were you thinking this creature was uh that time you know i'm just okay what what is this thing what what really is this um <clears throat> i believe that they're they're bad they're evil uh, a lot of uh, natives are like, bad, you shouldn't be looking into that, you know, just, just leave it alone. Uh, every tribe believes differently. Some believe that they are um, <clears throat> watchers. Some believe that they are evil. They're no good. Uh, some believe that um, they're, uh, what do you call it? They come in peace, I guess you could say. They're, they want to help and stuff like that. But, you know, every tribe believes differently. So for me, I really, I, I believe that they're, that they're no good. They're, they're evil. Some people can say, yeah, oh, they're nice. And, you know, we leave them this and gifts and stuff. Like that. Be careful with that because just in that split second, this thing could turn on you so fast. So nice or not, be careful. Just be really careful because, you know, we all don't know what their true intentions are. You know, always have your uh, guard up at all times. You just don't know. We don't know. Right. You know, every researcher out there, we're all doing the same thing. We can collect the hair. We can collect all the sounds and, and the structures that they make out there. We're all doing the same thing. It just, you know, for me, it's just it, all of you out there you know, that's in this field, you want to go out there and start looking. Be careful. Um, sometimes you don't know what you're getting into and don't let it consume you. You know, you have a family, take care of your family, take care of yourself too. Mm -hmm. And, good, um, good advice, real good advice. <clears throat> when did you start running into the other creatures and figuring, then starting to realize that there's the Bigfoot are drawn to these areas and now all these other creatures are starting to be drawn to just the same areas as the Bigfoot? I'm sorry. What was that again? When did you When did you realize you said there was another creature that drained the blood? You thought it was a you know a winged creature. When did you notice at first that they were they were inhabiting the same areas as the Sasquatch? Oh, um, well, we've always known that there's been other creatures other than Bigfoot running around here. So we all knew that there was something else, but we just can't really pinpoint exactly what it is. Uh, people were saying it's 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 got to be chupacabra. Well, mm, I don't know because chupacabra, some are small and some are big. Um, this one, I I I don't think it's a chupacabra. It's got to be something else. Um, I'll name off some of the stuff that people have seen: a dog man, 
uh, lizard man, um, a centaur, half man, half horse, a gargoyle. Um, of course, you got the skinwalkers, um, the little people, the gnomes. Um, what else is there? Oh, I've even seen the, what you call the, um, a pterodactyl that flew uh, right above the San Juan River. Um, pe some people in Arizona have seen those kind of creatures too out that way. Um, oh, there's something else out there in Arizona that they've seen down south. I just can't think of the name. Um, but, th you know, those are some of the things that um, I get reports on. Uh, you know, it's like, where do, where do we start? <laughs> you know, what, what, what do you do? How, how, how do you deal with stuff like that? You know, what can you do? You know, some of these things are, are huge, right. you know. And, and you uh, actually brought, you actually had uh, paranormal stuff happening at, out, on the, out on the reservation. It was, it was at your home, correct? Yes. Yeah, so that was some pretty serious stuff. Now, do you think that the Sasquatch was involved or they, like, uh, piggybacked home with you from your investigations? Um, mm, it could be, but um, for the ones that um, don't know, my family and I, we were on the show uh, Ghost Adventures. Uh, so if you want to see that episode, it's called The Curse of Upper Fruitland, I believe. Well, on that there, we do have paranormal stuff going on here at my home. Um, what we did not know, uh, which is uh, the family that lives next door to us, they've been having the same things going on, which we did not know. We just uh, found out probably about a year ago. Uh, they've been seeing ghosts. Uh, the gentleman has also seen uh, a gnome. His his little boy has seen gnomes running around on our yard, in our front yard late at night, I believe. And um, we've had, uh, my son has had uh, seen, or my kids, they would hear uh, a little girl um, laughing here in our home. Um, they would hear footsteps, like as if a little kid was running around in our home late at night. You know, my kids would tell me these things, and me and my husband, we'd be like, no, you guys are watching too many scary movies. You know, we didn't realize that it was really actually happening until I experienced something myself, um, and, and I didn't know what to, to make of it. I, I couldn't believe it. And what that is is um, um, my husband and my my kids, they all went uptown with their dad, and I wasn't feeling too good, so I just stayed home and <clears throat> took a nap. So when I got up, I heard the door, front door open and the door shut. And I could hear heavy footsteps walking from the front door through the kitchen, down the hallway, open that back door and slam it. And I'm like, oh, uh, they must be back. So I got up <clears throat> to check and I'm like, hey, where are you guys at? There's nobody. I looked outside. The car wasn't even here. So I'm like, oh, crap, you know. I'm like, okay, this is what my kids are talking about. And so I, you know, I didn't know what to make of it. And so I sat and talked with my kids. and I'm like, yeah, we've been telling you. We've been hearing these things. My son, uh, my oldest son, about three, four years ago, four or five years ago, he uh, was playing his, um, his game, his uh, uh, online game. And, uh, and it was probably around 1 o'clock, 1, 2 o'clock in the morning, real late. He's playing. Uh, he seen what looked like a little girl um, kind of like standing by the his bedroom door. And it kind of poked its head uh, in, and it went back out. And he's like, whoa, what the heck was that? And he said when he looked at it, there was, there was no face. It was just all black. But it had, she had long hair. And I was like, oh, man, the next, um, I think it was the next morning when my son had gotten up, right by his bedroom door, <clears throat> there was um, a, like kind of like a small wad of uh, long black 
I mean, jet black hair on the floor. So I'm like, what the hell? Well, that's not my hair. <laughs> Hair's long, but it's not that black, you know. So I was like, oh, don't touch that, you know. Uh, I'll, I'll get rid of it. So I did. But, yeah, that's um, some of the stuff that's been going on. Are we still having activity now today? Um, every once in a while we'll hear something, but we, we don't, we don't uh, pay attention to it because that's what it wants you to do. It wants you to um, react to it. So I don't. Um, I pray a lot. I do. I am a strong believer in God. So I know in my heart that he's protecting us and watching over us. And so, and these things can't hurt me. So now when I say that, just because I say that, I still got to be careful. Now, because there, there could be time that I might accidentally open up a door for them to come in even more, which I'm not going to do. And so, and that's another, another thing that, uh, you know, you all need to be careful if you're doing like this, these paranormal investigations, be careful. You know, um, you don't know what could be, you know, get attached to you and you come home and you're having all these, you know, strange things going on and you're trying to figure out what, why is this all happening? Well, if you're doing ghost, you know, uh, investigations and stuff, you're opening up a door where these things can latch onto you and you can take them home. So be really careful with that too. Right. Well, why do you think every everything's drawn to these areas? Like you have Bigfoot on the property, you have paranormal stuff on the property you have other creatures on the property why do you why why do why do you think that is well we like i said about a year ago we just found out our next door neighbor how was telling you that uh they were having the paranormal activity too on their plot we just found out that we happened to live on a burial site that we did not know that's why we're having all these activities going on so I think they're having a little bit more um, activities on that side. We are basically maybe like on uh, maybe the corner of that burial is where we're at. Kind of like almost at the like a uh, half little bit on the edge of that burial site. So our neighbors more on that burial site than we are. We're, we're, per, we're I mean, we're next to them. But that's the reason why they say that we're having a lot of activities. We're having a lot of things come through our property. And that explains everything pretty much, you know. So I've had um, my dad at that time was a, a, pra a pastor. He's passed on now. But he's come and uh, blessed our land, uh, did um, a prayer over our, our property here. And everything, you know, really seemed to have simmered down for quite some time. But... I do need to get that blessing done again. You know, it, it does really help a whole lot. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you still have the Sasquatch coming around the property? Oh, yeah. Earlier in April of this year, uh, my daughter came in from uh, Arizona for a visit, and she was um, in the living room, and it was probably, I think, about 2 o'clock in the morning. And uh, we were all asleep, all asleep, and all of a sudden, on the east side of our house, we heard a loud slap against the house and shook the wall. I mean, that's how hard it hit the side of the house. And my daughter jumped up. Did you hear that, Mom? And I'm like, yes, I did. So we, um, like, oh, crap, that thing, you know, it does. It, it'll hit the side of the house. Why does it do that? Probably to see if you're awake or, like, they're letting you, like, hey, we're here. We're outside. Or they want to know what part of the house you're at where you're at, you know, uh, maybe trying to draw us to come out. It could be, could be anything. Mm -hmm. So yes, we do. We still have it uh, running around here. Mm -hmm. We've had uh, a lot of people here uh, yelling down at the river. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask one more question. Then I'm going to open it up for uh, our audience. We're almost the hours already here. It's gone quick. Um, do you think there's something special about the Sasquatch, or do you think they're just flesh and blood living on this planet? And uh... um, I think there there's more to them. That's all I can say for right now. Um, time will tell. 
you know, when they really come out. So when they come out, you all better be really careful out there in the woods or if you live in a wooded area. Um, I think they're going to come out in full force. That That's what I feel uh, that's going to start taking place here soon. So be careful. I have a personal question for you. I gifted with these guys. I know you're against it. And I gifted with these guys for six years. I got sick and I had to go in the hospital for a month and I couldn't make it to my gifting site. Now, my gifting site is 10 miles away from my house. Mm -hmm. I woke up one morning and had a, a coyote leg at my back door, ripped from the dog, fresh. I mean, mm -hmm. blood, I got pictures of it. Um, what do you think that is? Um, it could be it could be something evil or somebody trying to uh, witchcraft you. Uh, the best thing to do is don't touch it. And if you already have touched it, um, you need to have someone say a prayer over you and over your property. And um, it could be uh, someone is um, um, trying to do harm to you or your family. So you got to be uh, really careful with that. Um, <clears throat> uh, the best thing to do is, um, what did they say, to um, use a, a, probably a shovel or something, take it <clears throat> and burn it, get rid of it. Well, I threw it back in the woods and it was <clears throat> taken. It was taken, gone in 10 minutes. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, this was, I don't know, about, it was about three years ago. So. About three years ago. How do you feel now? Have you been sick since? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Quite had a bit? Serious, yeah, my stomach problems. I had my eyes it's all messed up. Um, <clears throat> so I was just curious. I, a lot of people tell me it was a gift from them because they felt bad for me because I wasn't there. They brought it, you know, to make me feel better. I mean, mm -hmm. I was just getting your opinion. It, it, it could be, you know, um, it could be anything, really. So... For me, as a you know, a native, the natives would believe that okay, that that's that's witchcraft. Okay. Be careful with that. Well, I don't want to mess with it. Believe me, I threw yeah. it in the woods with yeah. a glove. I didn't touch it personally. That, so. That's good. Good. Yeah. Um, all I traded with them was with apples and uh, peanut butter jars. That was it. Mm -hmm. Six yeah. years. Nothing. Don't. We tried meat, and uh, when we didn't make it up there, like every week, they would come uh -huh. down to the house and slap the properties where I was at, the side yeah. of their house. Mm -hmm. and they wanted the meat, so we figured that was a bad thing to give them. So we just stuck with the peanut butter and apples for all the years and really never had any problems at the house out there. So, mm -hmm. the, the only reason why it says, uh, I say don't feed them is because, you know, in our, in our area here, we had a, a lady that was feeding them. And um, if you don't feed them, you know, if you stop, they'll get mad. And, you know, they get upset. So this lady, she went on vacation for like two weeks. And uh, so there was no food for him. I guess she was taking food back there, you know. And um, she came back. Her her backyard was ransacked. Everything was thrown around. This thing got mad because there was no food. Mm -hmm. And so you got to look at the other people. The neighbors may not even want this thing around. Right. So they're going to go over there looking for food. Guess what? You know, if they don't give them food, they're going to get mad too. Mm. And so uh, that's the reason, really, the main reason why I say don't, don't feed them. Like, you know, they they can't find food down at the river. They, yeah, it's better that way. That way, you don't um, they don't hurt you. Mm. You know, <clears throat> like I said, you don't know. Right. You know, it, it could just happen so quickly. So yeah. always be careful. You know. Yeah. Well, thank you. My honest answer is what I wanted, and that's an honest answer. Mm. All right. So if you guys have a question. Uh, here we got one from Brown Dwarf right here. Has Brenda experienced the orb phenomenon, and does she believe that they are related to the Sasquatch people? Uh, yes, I've seen many orbs, and yes, I do believe they are related to the Sasquatch. <clears throat> Let's see. Here I go. Here's a comment about the, what I just asked. Chris, I believe that because you were feeding them, they were trying to tell you we need food. Once I fed a feral cat and it brought me a dead squirrel. Yeah. Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. But I mean, they traveled 10 miles from my spot. It takes us an hour and a half to get to my gifting spot. It's not like in someone's backyard. Right. So 
know, they traveled 10, mi 10 miles, whatever it did, <laughs> and that leg to me, and uh, it was crazy. Let's see. Almost there. Good question, Brown Dwarf. Do you, here we go. Do you have any Skinwalker Ranch type activity at your lo your loca your location? We have um, yeah the property that I live on. I've had some researchers tell me that everything that you have going on is exactly what's going on on Skin Rocko Ranch. So uh, I guess so. Yes. <laughs> I I think that happens in a lot of areas, Brenda. Yeah. I just, there's certain areas out there that have this high energy. Yep. And, these, and all these creatures and all this weird stuff is attracted to it. <clears throat> Yeah, and you, and you just happen to live right on top of one of them spots. Oh yeah, you know we had. I'm gonna give, tell you this real as fast as I can. Back in 2011, I had set up a video camera, and um, it was about 11 o'clock. Went to bed. I let this run. Now this runs for about an hour and a half. So uh, my dog's in the back. We had a, a husky at that time was laying in the back. And so we kept her, I hate, I don't like tying up dogs, but I had to because there's sheep out there. They thought she's killing the sheep, but it wasn't. Anyway, um, there was a bright light. So I'm going to cut it. Um, there's so much going on in this video that I'm just going to skip from the beginning all the way towards the end. So there was a bright light that appeared in the back field. So just before that happened, this whatever it was back there i seen in the video it looked like little balls or or some kind of black little bees or balls or something that were like just jumping around all over and then they they were on top of my dog whatever those things were knocked out my dog for about a good 20 minutes wow after she went out this light appears in the back field uh, the best way i can describe this color of light was kind of like a fluorescent blue to greenish real kind of bright light this thing started forming it got bigger and bigger as it got big it looked like to me it looked like a glowing man standing there i could see a head i could see shoulders and i could see three big images <clears throat> standing in front of this thing and two black tall whatever i don't know what it was but standing beside it so there i don't know what it was doing now right above that it, I, my sister, she was watching this video. She goes, that looks like a UFO. We could see like box windows where something is walk, walking back and forth in front of the window. And we're just watching like, oh, they, oh my God, what are we living on? You know, what is this? And um, <clears throat> she uh, noticed that. And I started we were really watching this. And all of a sudden the light or this, this, um, there was like a bluish light that was above this figure that was standing there. Uh, a few minutes later, like I said, from the time my dog went out, this thing starts forming was about a good 20 minutes. And then it started fading. As it's fading, then the light like disappears. And then my dog, my husky, sits back up and she's kind of like, whoa, what happened, you know? She gets up and starts barking, starts moving around. Now, when we were looking, you know, watching that video, I, we could, what I'd see was, uh, what it looked like was like stairs. And whatever it was, it was walking back up to this thing. And um, <clears throat> that's when the video stopped. It, I ran out of tape and I don't know what, if this thing flew off. I don't know what it was. Wow. Um, so that happened in the back, in the back of our house. So stuff like that, you know, we're just like, what in the world? What What is this we're living on, you know? What is going on? So, yeah, we've had a lot of a lot of strange things going on here on this property we are on. Yeah, and if none of you have ever seen the episode of Ghost Adventures, I recommend it highly. There's so much evidence caught at that, mm -hmm. at her home. It's like on unreal evidence even that that shadow figure that they catch on the thermal outside mm -hmm. by the fence like just so my arms are here on my arms just sticking straight up just because of that uh yeah watch it because uh it'll blow your mind how close I, to the spring river are you about a quarter mile to the north behind our home 
So you think they travel the rivers. Is there a reason why they travel the, the big, rivers? The Bigfoots, uh, water, food. You think there's any other reasons or any special reasons, uh, energy or? Probably a lot. There's a lot of energy down there. So they hang around those areas down there. Like I said, everything that, <clears throat> what I've noticed, everything that has come through, even what my son had seen um uh, was probably uh, uh not probably what he seen was but standing by the tractor was a half man half horse standing by the tractor <clears throat> in the back it jumped over the fence headed back to the river <clears throat> everything that has come through our property has always ran back to the river why has it always why what what is it about that river There's a lot of energy down there <clears throat> so every like i said everything that has come through <clears throat> excuse me has run back has has always run towards the river back to the river yep. um this is something we haven't disclosed yet and i'm going to disclose it right now we are coming to the realization that these guys like to hang around aquifers so if you have an <clears throat> aquifer in your areas and you're doing investigations just take a look take a look and uh give me an email at discover sasquatch at gmail.com and let me know what you come up with but uh we're finding that in the aquifers the old ancient water um there's a lot of sasquatch uh activity in those areas all right here we go question what is the ghost adventure episode that you were on i believe it was called the the curse of upper fruitland i yep. think that's what it was called yep and there was another one that they did and this one they did uh, i believe they named um skinwalker canyon that's another one that they uh they did in in the same in in my area too which is just up the road from where i live yeah they went into yeah. the witch's cave right that's when they uh, went down to that witch's yes. cave yeah, yeah yeah forget forget that you don't see me going into no witch's cave no <laughs> way <laughs> Now we got time for a couple more questions, then we're going to let Brenda get uh, get some dinner ready and get on with her night. She's two hours behind us, so I just want to say thank you so much for joining us tonight to, um, to hear the stories and uh, that poor rabbit. Um, I could just see it in my head, that rabbit getting pulled through one of those little squares now. I just got it pictured in my head. I'm just like, oh, he's, yeah, it, he's skinning it, it all bad. at once, gutting yeah. it, skinning it all at once. Yeah, it was it was it was really bad. The the um oh the ram. Let me share this one real fast. Okay, you know how I was saying this whatever was uh, puncturing a hole in the neck, sucking out all the blood. Mm -hmm. Okay, so one of our church family asked me to come to her house after church one day. So I did. She showed me what had happened. They had a ram that weighed about three to four hundred pounds. It's a huge ram. And so she was this thing it sucked out all the blood same thing um <clears throat> what this thing did sat on top of this ram actually pulled the ram grabbed his hind legs the back of the legs of the ram pulled it out of the uh, corral out uh, out in the opening like this thing must have sat on top of the ram shoved its face in the ground i mean hard to where when i where they took me to see the ram it had a uh, dirt up its nose it had dirt in its eyes and same thing uh, like a puncture in the neck blood was sucked out the surgical uh, cut on the side now on this ram <clears throat> it looked like it, where it it literally tore off the skin the side uh, the, the the wool skin off that ram so it had like a like a sharp nail kind of like this I guess you could say so it like literally just ripped it off so there was a an, imp, an imprint on that ram like the nail like this i wish i could show you guys a picture um and it just ripped that side off and it to me it looked like just the shape of the hand and that nail on that ram skin on the outer edges of that looked like it was a burn mark to me, it looked like unless it was his dry blood, but to me, it kind of looked burned. That was really, really strange. I'm like, well, something's, whatever it is, had big hands. Mm. You know, it, it was huge. 
So maybe the next time if I'm on the show, I'll, I will um, send you pictures and we can go over those pictures oh, yeah, and talk love, about that. We'll definitely have you back. I'd love to see them. I actually recently seen a picture of a goat down in Florida with his, dr his blood drain and it's surgically cut like a, mm -hmm. ra like a laser would cut it. Mm -hmm. And it was just one, one swipe, clean yep. sweat, and the whole back end of the goat was gone. And wow. No blood. No, not a crazy, crazy picture. Crazy picture. I don't like to see those. All right. A couple more questions and then uh, uh, we'll get on with the night. Question. Do you say you live on the sacred burial site? What tribe was buried there? Uh, I believe the, the burial site is uh, Navajo. Dene. <clears throat> okay. Now that's the whole, the whole reservation you're on is Navajo, correct? Yes. The Navajo Reservation. Okay, here we go. Here's one from D. Worm. Brenda, do you ever go to the river or actively look for them? Go in the woods. Uh, yes, I do. I go to see if I can get some vocalizations or to see if I can uh, find evidence like structures, uh, footprints. Um, uh, there at the river, and I usually sometimes I'll go out into the mountains. <clears throat> nice. I just want to mention this: Brenda steps in front of her team. Um, the 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 soul 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 searcher is that? Oh, our um, my uh, I have a YouTube channel. It's under New Mexico Shadow Seekers. Shadow. That's our our team name. Um, so I have some videos there if you guys want to check those out. <clears throat> and, I'll link um, everything in the description for you all tomorrow so you guys can just click right on it and get to it. Yeah. I also have a Facebook page uh, under New Mexico Shadow Seekers, Bigfoot and Beyond. Okay. So, yeah, for sure it'll all be linked tomorrow for you guys. To, I checked them out for the last few days. Uh, some interesting stuff. The the one where they the, the camper got messed up, that big handprint there on the, the first handprint. That thing, wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's crazy stuff. Was here we got uh, Brenda. Was this in the winter time? I guess the Ram story. Summertime. Summertime. Yeah. So well, many people. So many people during that time lost. A week after that incident, the family, their neighbor next door, lost uh, twenty-five sheep in one night. Same thing. Wow. Well, we're definitely going to have you back. We're definitely going to get the pictures, and I will schedule it for later. So you don't have to run all over the place. You can relax a little bit before we get you on. And uh, we'll definitely uh, have you back. Again, nice comment. It's been a good show. Thank you, Brenda and Chris. This has been very interesting. She has a lot of activity of all kinds. Great show. Well, thank you so much. Thank, thank you for having me. Yeah. Yeah, it was awesome. Um, everybody had a good time. Thank everybody for uh, showing up. Um, and we're definitely going to have you back. Uh, I go in for my surgeries. Uh, uh, next month, and actually, I you guys all know I got in the sh the, the the spot on uh, KGRA. Uh, Brenda's going to be my first interview on the radio station. I've already asked her; um, she said she would do it, so she will be my first radio interview when that all goes down. And I'm looking forward to having her on there. And that's going to be live too on the KGRA site. It's going to be so we can share pictures then too. And uh, I'm looking very forward to it all. So I'm going to put you backstage, and I'll, I'll see you in a little bit. And uh, okay. thank, thank you so much. Ladies and You're gentlemen, welcome. Ms. Brenda Harris. Thank you. All right, all right, all right. Another great show. Thank you all for showing up tonight on this Tuesday night. We know we're in the heat wave. It's kind of hot out there. I hope you all got a nice, cool drink to watch the show tonight. And uh, uh, I don't know what the next show is next up. Uh, the, the surgery date is right around in that area. But um, I think I have um, Miss Lori Dyer Hood is going to be my next guest. And then I have Dan, the Professor Nedrilo, at the end of the month. And uh, that's the last two shows I'll have before the surgery. So, again, thank you all for showing up. I really appreciate it. You guys are the best. And as you know, my friend Larry always says, 
getting the woods, people.